for peace. So is this working? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Because I have such great news. Yeah. I have a plan. Yeah. I have a plan, a terrific plan. Now, it's going to take some math, so bear with me. On October 17th, 2002, this is also secret, so I'd like you to keep it just among the, the us. <laughs> On September 17th, 2002, the Congress voted in the defense budget, 300 55 billion, 400 million dollars. Oh. Now, this is my plan. I want to get a bill passed so that the money has to come out of ATM machines. <laughs> and the Congress must go there to get it. That would be 17 billion, 770 million, 20 dollar bills. Now, one would come out, we have one out every second, so there would be 60 per minute. That would be 296,166,667 minutes. And that means it would take 205,671.3 days to get it out. Now, you and I both know <laughs> this would take, at one hour, we'd get $72,000 out. So that would take 563.48 years. <laughs> and that means that we would need to get it all out in a year about 600 ATM machines. Now, you and I both know that Congress is not going to stand in front of ATM machines 24 hours a day getting little $20 bills out and handing them to people to count. So, you're going to have to hire people to do it. And that's where we come in. A little civil disobedience is all we need if we can get it organized. If we do six-hour shifts, I don't know if we should unionize these people or not, probably. Yeah, we should. Okay. But then we have to have lunch hours and vacations and sick days. But weekends, right. But anyhow, time and a half, uh, six-hour shifts, four shifts per machine, it would mean we'd need 876,000 people shifts to be covered. Now we need to get our people hired, and we would need a couple of coordinators. And then we could siphon off some money for other areas. Just have somebody walking by and hand it to them. I mean, who's going to count all those $20 bills? Now I've done some research, and I put out some, um, the word out, and I've had some applications from people already. And here's a couple of samples of the grant applications that I have received. To Joan Uvalauer, pardon me for not being able to say your name right. What a good idea. My family lives in Bolivia along the river. Enron and Shell had a huge oil line going through our country along the river. The pipe burst last January and 160 miles of our river is covered with oil. This river supplied our fish, our place to wash clothes, the water for bathing, the water for our crops. The land along the river is saturated with oil. If we had just about four hours at one of those machines, less than half a day, we could start the cleanup and perhaps get some legal help. Please accept our application. Mrs. Ebelhair, I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I am homeless, and I have one small child who is 26 months old. The social workers here estimate that it takes working 87 hours a week at minimum wage 
for me to get enough money for myself and Caitlin to live on. If I could get 24 minutes at the machine, it would give me more than a year to get my life together. You can reach me at the address of the church where we eat lunch every day. How soon will we know? Thank you for your idea, Pauline and Caitlin. Madam, I shall make my application brief. I have AIDS. My two children have AIDS. My husband died of AIDS about six months ago. The clinics do not have enough medicine to treat us. I have no place to live. Our village here in Zimbabwe has many sick people. It is my children who break my heart. I do not have the strength to help them. My brother estimates that one hour at the machine would see all of us through and get the medicine we need. We are grateful, Karze and family. Mrs. Evil Hair, I'm applying for my mother. We must get her help immediately. She and myself and my three sisters and all my daughters were three weeks in a rape camp in Bosnia. We've come to terms, my sister and I. My daughters are healing. They have each other. My mother cannot bear the shame she feels. There are medical people here who could hear her, but she needs to go see her sisters in Poland. Three minutes at the machine would be all we would need. Magda. Mrs. Evilhair, I know we should have put aside more money, bought health insurance for our old age, but somehow with seven children, we didn't. Now my wife has breast cancer. The medication she must take costs over $400 a month. We are old people, but I think she deserves to be comfortable to the end. She doesn't like to spend money on herself. Her life expectancy is about five years. 20 minutes would be sufficient. That is what we are applying for to get through these five years. We won't get into any trouble doing this, will we, Charles? To the lady who asks what we need, since the World Bank has forced us here in Ecuador to privatize our water, we cannot afford water to drink. We must walk for six, for two hours to get water at a faraway well. We must walk back with the heavy water. We can only store up about five days worth of water for the neighborhood. We can have a well dug, I am told, in the village. Someone told me it costs about $3,000 American. I don't know how to figure what you're asking, but I think it would be less than 10 minutes. Can you help us with that part of the asking? Anna Anita. So you see, I think we could figure it out. Get some needs met and make some differences with the risk, with little risk, with my plan. But sisters and brothers, I think before we decide to get organized and start getting applications for the grants and get the volunteers together, I wonder if you might consider another plan. Now it's not plan B, it's plan A. And plan A says that with all of us together, we must take back the power of the people and we decide how our money is being spent and stop this madness of this world. <laughs>